Hello and welcome to Exchange for Media Live at Khan. I have with me today Mr. George Manas, he is the CEO of OMD World. George, thank you for being with us. Oh, thank you for having me. So, what's what's up at Khan this year? Anything that stands out for you? Yeah, look, there's um obviously a lot of discussion about uh generative AI and uh I think a lot of healthy discussion about it. I'm looking forward to hearing more from our partners and our clients about the actual application of generative AI in in the real world. I think we were talking quite hypothetically about it over the course of the last year, 18 months and I think in Cannes this year the headline will really be about real use cases of of generative AI and and not talking about it just in the abstract. Any particular case that stands out for you which is used generative AI especially something from the O&D side yeah. what you've done? No, there's some great look there we're really really proud and and fortunate to have a lot of investment on our side through Omni our global data and marketing orchestration platform. So last year we rolled out Omni Assist, which is our generative AI AI capabilities within the Omni platform. So we're talking uh, here in Can about quite a few use cases where we're using these generative AI capabilities in the day-to-day uh work that our teams are doing for clients. So things like helping to get to insights faster by having chat functionality for our planners or the ability to fuse audience segments uh with Google and Amazon using fusion techniques this is for me real world examples of of just how far we've come in in you know just about a year with some of this generative ai innovation but any one brand you could tell me you know highlight the work that you've done for any particular brand anywhere globally Yeah so um there was just a a PepsiCo uh, case study featured um here uh at uh, at the Omnicom Cove. Uh, I think a really good example of some of the work that um we're we're doing there. Um PepsiCo has also been a a great um example of uh using generative AI for advanced audience segmentation. So how we're using generative AI to help us get to purchase based insights uh faster and optimize our um digital and programmatic buying um in a much more real time way against those purchases so that's a i think a really good example of generative AI in action you know we're talking about technology and uh, you know generative AI and other forms of technology when you look at a client today how has their needs evolved and how is OMD you know kept pace with them yeah so we look we've seen needs evolve and i would say expand um pretty rapidly especially post pandemic um so the kinds of questions we're getting asked today are generative AI, ai use cases on areas that historically maybe weren't specifically within the realm of media so a lot of questions about the use of generative ai for data activities data processing um data insights um but also generative ai through the lens of operational excellence how are we using these new and next capabilities to create efficiency um in the work that we do for clients so you'll be familiar with how complicated media operations has become given all the fragmentation um given all of the targeting abilities so uh, lots of questions from clients today around how to use generative ai to make that process more effective and efficient um so that our teams aren't spending too much time on low level tasks and we can outsource those low level tasks to uh a bot uh or an assist capability uh if you will uh are there any do's and don'ts that you have probably any framework that you have when it comes to applying ai because sure. there is a lot of talk about uh, you know the negative effects so of course. are there any do's and don'ts at omnicom which you have kept in mind yeah so um globally we've developed our responsibility framework for ai which serves as a governance mechanism for all of our entities and teams globally in that regard so we have a very specific approach to how we procure ai services um we have a great partnership with uh, our legal team as well who's working very closely with privacy experts um to guide and advise um on that so i think if there's a major uh kind of do and don't i would say the don't is don't just be reactive and jump into something because somebody else is doing it spend the time to actually vet um uh, the the capability the platform the service so that you have a real understanding of where the data is sourced from 
what the legal requirements look like, um, so that you can align that with your standards um, as an organization internally, which is something that um, we've done very deliberately in terms of who we choose to partner with and how we partner with them. You mentioned Omni. So is there any word, can you just give me a sense of where your investments are going towards in terms of uh, technology? What are you sure. working on? Any new service or any new product in the offering? Yeah, so look, we've made um, a ton of investment um, in in those generative AI capabilities. So last year here at Can, we announced uh, first to market relationships with a lot of the big platforms and providers, Google and Adobe uh, and Amazon and so on and so forth. So we continue to invest in that area. Um, we're looking at privacy safe technologies as a core competency and capability. So um, lots of investment going towards clean rooms. Um, and how we're um, supporting and advising clients within the growing clean room space. Just as, as an example of that, we've been first to market with Amazon on Amazon Marketing Cloud, their clean room capabilities. Uh, we're currently deploying the most instances of the Amazon uh, Marketing Cloud clean room uh, in the industry. So we're leading in that regard and, and lots of innovation there as well as with partners like Google in the same um, capacity. I would say the other area of investment for us has been commerce. And obviously you saw we uh, acquired Flywheel um, and closed on that earlier this year. Flywheel is such a critical piece of our end-to-end -end data strategy because they offer unprecedented uh, data within the commerce uh, arena that we're now integrating and synthesizing with our broader data set so that we can provide clients with a truly holistic approach to both marketing and uh, retail uh, and transaction level uh, data. So quite a huge effort there as we continue to integrate that um, into our solution base and um, a couple of great panels here at the Omnicom Cove featuring clients like Clorox who are taking advantage of, of this innovation to help drive their business forward. You mentioned commerce. Now, I just want to know your take about how do you see commerce and retail media evolving? Because particularly in India, this is taking a huge leap. Sure. And particularly, we have quick commerce which yeah. has taken over. Yeah. So what is your sense how this is evolving and how brands can leverage it? Yeah, so it's, it's, it's the most exciting moment, I think, in terms of commerce and, and retail media. Uh, in 2017, I said something like media and retail are converging, and uh, that's absolutely the case now. So I think what we're seeing is a lot of new and next opportunities to bridge the gap or close the gap between marketing and sales. So whether it's through quick commerce capabilities, whether it's through new retail media offerings, we're really seeing that convergence in a way that we haven't before. So I think it's forcing brands and their agencies to really rethink how they go to market, how they plan their overall marketing investments. And um, we've just been so delighted with Flywheel and having that capability and that expertise now within uh, Omnicom because we're able to sit at a table and really talk more holistically with clients about their end-to-end -end, um, investment. So is a lot of budget now going towards commerce media? How much do you foresee or how much do you see going towards yeah. commerce and quick commerce or retail media? Yeah, sure. Uh, look, retail media um, will, over the course of the next couple of years, um, exceed television spending. So it is of major significance to anybody who's participating in either media or retail. Um, of course, um, you know, we're seeing a lot of innovation in this space as well. So a lot of new offerings um, that are um, coming out. We're really excited by all the uh, developments with video. You know, I think Amazon and Prime Video has been uh, a real example of how retail media is maturing. And it's no longer just transactional, but actually looking at how retail media can play a role in brand building and brand engagement through video. So I know we're excited as well to see a lot of those developments in India. Of course, Mini TV has been uh, a, 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 a real success, a huge success. 
Um, and I think, you know, we're going to expect a lot more as well as we look at how um, entities like Prime, uh, Prime Video continue to expand in India and beyond. So really exciting. I have a question on that, which I'll come back of course, to later. Yeah. But uh, you're just stepping back on AI and brand sure. building. Is there any challenge in scaling up? Are you seeing any challenges on that front and how do brands go about that? With using AI to yeah, do brand building? Scale, basically scalability. Sure. I think, look, the technology is there. Um, today to, to deliver this at scale, I think there's a learning curve that we're all on, agencies, brands, um, and there's a level of um, know-how that um, organizations need to continue to build and achieve. It reminds me um, uh, when I started earlier, way earlier on in my career when we used to talk about you know, websites and should brands have websites and should brands do digital, should brands be on social um, and I think we're, we're at that nascent, uh, nascent uh, state right now where I think very rapidly we're going to see AI scale in a much more foundational way supporting brands in their global brand building exercises. Okay, so coming back to the Amazon Prime, yeah. in an earlier interview you spoke about streaming platforms being an opportunity for advertisers yeah. and agencies, but you also mentioned it is frustrating. Yeah. Can you expand on this? Yeah, sure. Is Look, it because they're all paid? Is it because of that? When you pay for it, you expect a ad experience? Well, there's the dynamics of ad supported and subscription based. And I think, you know, we're seeing that dynamic play out in different ways across different markets. India happens to be heavily ad supported. So there's significant opportunity for advertisers to continue to build out a presence in their brands um, within the streaming and, and OTT space in India specifically. I mean, you've got 500 million streamers um, in India, a mobile rich market as well, which means that is that number is only going to accelerate. So I think there are tons of exciting developments there, but with that becomes comes new challenges, fragmentation, uh, questions about uh, uh, data integrations. So you know, I think on one hand, while streaming is offering all these new opportunities for brands to reach and engage consumers in a really meaningful way, that's coming with all sorts of challenges, challenges of measurement as well. I should say where there hasn't been a standard um, of, of 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 measurement. So you know, I think the industry is doing a lot to get there. Um, but we still have a lot of work to do to um, create uh, more uh, more of the foundations to ensure that OTT and streaming remain um, scalable and sustainable in terms of the value that they deliver for brands. You preempted my question. I was going to ask you about Look, good, I did my homework. I was yeah. going to ask you about measurement. But you, what is the most frustrating part in this space? Well, I think right now, you know, if you talk, a, a lot of the clients that, um, that we have the privilege of working with are frustrated by... Um, a lack of connectivity uh, in, in measurement. Everything today is, is heavily walled gardened. Yeah. So um, while advertisers are placing a lot of bets within the OTT and streaming space, there's still a lack of uh, kind of cross-platform measurement solutions so that um, they can understand their investments more, but also understand what's happening across um, across their investment. So I think really we're at a tipping point, whereas streaming and OTT reach scale, and they are reaching scale, we're going to see a lot of development and I think a lot of energy around the, solving that measurement question. We've been doing a lot in this space in terms of the way that we approach data partnerships, platform partnerships, getting access to log level data uh, so that we can help marketers stitch together a much more uh, robust view of their streaming and OTT performance. So we, we, we're going to continue to push on that and uh, I think the industry is going to be along with us on that ride. So where do you see connected TV in all this? Yeah, so connected t TV is so important because I think it's really the focal point right now for where things are really happening. If you think about what's happening in sports as an example, I think India is a great example of, if you look at the cricket uh, market right now in the IPL, it's you know, that is uh, now obviously being made more available uh, to streaming and connected TV audiences. So I think right now it's it's kind of the perfect blend of digital uh, digital capabilities in terms of targeting and uh, ad delivery, but also with all the benefits that linear TV has given us of engaged viewership, uh, co-viewership, which is a huge component 
that I think we we're all under mes- uh, underestimating right now. And let's as not well. forget, IPL was free this year. And IPL was free, was free this year, this year. So exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, a word on your Indian leadership. Oh, it's a it's a really brilliant team. I mean, India has been such a focus for us. Um, you know, for so many reasons, because it's important to our clients as a growth uh, market, because it represents such a significant talent pool. I think that's one of my learnings um, now that I'm three years into the global role is just how important India is in terms of representing the new and next skill sets and competencies within the talent base. So we continue to invest there. We've launched uh, new campuses as Omnicom. Uh, We launched three new campuses um, this year. We've got over 4,000 employees within our um, centers of excellence um, within India. So um, I continue to look to India and our India leadership as, frankly, a beacon for what's new and what's next. So I think the role that that India is playing in our portfolio isn't just about doing great work in India, but it's also about guiding and inspiring um, the most innovative work that is happening across the network right now. Any particular, you mentioned talent and I'm just, uh, I'm assuming that there's a lot of cross uh, learnings also. Big time. Any particular learning that you take back from India? Yeah. And and vice versa, any talent, uh, any learning from outside India? Yes. I think it's great. So it's a great question. I think one of the things that we've done so well um, through India has been around the uh, certifications and training of talent within the digital and data spaces. So we've made a real effort to create learning and development programs to help accelerate and guide our talent growth within India. We're taking a lot of those learnings and we're now applying them um, elsewhere in the network. So we have one of the biggest and most robust digital and data talent pools in India. Um, and that talent has become a real inspiration for us outside of India, how we think about training and, and developing talent around all these new and next areas like advanced analytics, use of clean rooms, digital platforms. So um, I think it's, you know, it's, it's been a real case study for us in how to develop that next generation of talent. And um, what are your future plans or expectations from India? Where do you see it in the list of uh, uh, OMD? Which, at what number do you see India in terms of revenues, right? Where well, do you see India, please? The, so I think about countries in terms of momentum. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we are a scaled organization. We've got a lot of big and established countries that we support. Obviously, US, UK, Germany. Um, India is the prime example of a growth market. So we have a ton of momentum there. Our new business record has been stellar. Um, and we continue to invest uh, in ensuring that we're able to deliver the variety of services that our clients are asking for in, in India. So I've made two trips to India already um, this year, as I mentioned earlier, to Bangalore and to uh, Mumbai. I plan to uh, do another visit in July. So I think, I hope, would hope my um, presence um, in the country is also appreciated and, and recognized by our teams there as just how important India remains in terms of our growth, global growth priorities. Thank you so much for your time. It was a pleasure talking to you. Oh, thank you. This is great. Looking forward to doing it again.